Joining me now to discuss the Kurdish freedom movement is Kurdish Minister Falah Mustafa Bakir. He is the head of the Department of Foreign Relations of the Kurdish Regional Government. Thanks for joining us. First question has to be, is this the right time for Kurdish independence? Is this a historical moment? Well, we have made it clear that we work on two paths. We have adopted a dual path approach. One approach continuing in the political process in Iraq in order to see what can we do or if there is any opportunity to build an Iraqi state. Because today we cannot claim that we have a state. Iraq has failed. If there were any opportunity left, we will do whatever we can with our partners in the Shia and Sunni communities to build that Iraq. On the second path, as President of the Kurdistan region has made it clear that we are going towards the referendum whereby the people of Kurdistan would exercise the right to self-determination. And this is very clear. Our people have been oppressed under the name of sovereignty. Today, it's our people who ask for more sovereignty. So that's not 100 percent yes. Uh, some commentators have said that this uh, independence referendum is actually a bargaining chip to get more out of Baghdad, to get more oil revenues and more say in Baghdad politics. Is that the case? No, indeed, it's not the case. Uh, our people have shown clearly that they are for independence, but we want to show the rest of the world that we are not to be blamed for the breakup of Iraq. We did not disintegrate Iraq. It was the Iraqi policies, the wrong policy that were adopted by Baghdad created the split. Today, we live in a situation whereby it's very dangerous. Uh, we have a neighbor next to us which has a border of 1,035 kilometers long. It's a terrorist organization. The whole world looks at us to t tell us thank you. But thank you is not enough. What we need today is military assistance, security assistance, and humanitarian assistance to deal with this challenge, which, has, which is an international phenomenon. Therefore, <laughs> Kurds are paying the price. So we are not using this as a bargaining chip. Our people deserve independence, but we have done everything we could, and we have waited more than enough to build a federal, democratic, pluralistic Iraq. But that Iraq cannot be built by slogans. Well, can I just ask that uh, the Peshmerga, uh, the forces uh, uh, of your area, acted very quickly, and uh, a lot of people say very well against the Islamic insurgents. But some have also said uh, that you grabbed the oil-rich city of Kirkuk, long a, a goal of, of a Kurdistan, uh, and took advantage of the crisis. Sir, this is not true because the boundaries of Kurdistan are very clear. These are parts of Kurdistan historically, geographically, demographically. But after the liberation of Iraq, we have waited for a legal constitutional procedure so that we would have a peaceful and lasting solution. But Unfortunately, Baghdad and the rest of the world did not come forward in order to uh, implement and fulfill that obligation. But, but so the, when the, the Iraqi status forces, of Kirkuk was not settled uh, and hasn't been well, settled. It, Yes, Article 140 of the Iraqi Constitution was a three-stage process in order to settle that, but Baghdad has uh, kept uh, running away from that commitment. Therefore, when the Iraqi forces left the people unprotected, Peshmergas were obliged to move in into the places that the Iraqi forces were. But originally, Peshmergas were there since 2003 onwards. Therefore, it was not the first day. There were some areas that only Iraqi forces were there, and the Iraqi forces betrayed the people, did not protect the people. Therefore, our Peshmerga forces were obliged to move in to protect the people and to defend the land. Uh, independence, if you get it, would actually mean the end of the Iraqi state, correct? You would be partly responsible for the dissolution of Iraq? Not, uh, absolutely not, because we are not part of the problem. We are part of the solution. Iraq is not a state today. Uh, one third of the Iraqi territory is under the control of uh, Islamic State. So who is responsible for that? Is it us? We have provided safe haven to uh, over a million and a half people who have taken refuge in Kurdistan region. We were the only force that we were not helped militarily, but our Peshmerga forces being loyal and faithful and resilient were able to protect the people and the region. Therefore, this question has to be addressed to Baghdad, why it was not able to protect the people, defend the land, and having all these men under arms, having all these advanced weaponry. Let's say uh, your independence vote is backed overwhelmingly and you move uh, towards statehood. Uh, what about the rest of the neighborhood? Iran, Syria, Turkey in the past 
uh, have been dead against the creation of a Kurdish state. A uh, hundred years ago, uh, Turkey stopped Kurdistan from coming in to uh, becoming a nation. How, who's to say that won't happen again with some of your neighbors? Well, when we talk about independence, we talk about Iraqi Kurdistan territories. Therefore, we have shown our neighbors that we are a factor for stability, that we are a force for moderation. And also our experience, be it from 1991 to 2003 or from 2003 onward, it has shown the neighbors and the rest of the world that we are a peaceful nation, a peaceful neighbor, a neighbor that looks forward to build good neighbor relations based on mutual interest and mutual res uh, respect and understanding. What, Therefore, what, what we are about proud what, of what <clears throat> Sorry uh, to interrupt. What about the U.S.? Um, because, as you know, you have been trying to export oil. Uh, Iraq has declared that illegal because uh, it belongs to the Iraqi people, uh, Baghdad says. Uh, the U.S. has also told other countries that these uh, sales are illegal. So you really need the U.S. to, uh, to back you on this, right? I believe the United States uh, uh, is more receptive and more understanding of our situation today than before, because we were the only democratic force and region in Iraq, and we have done everything possible to support the policies of building a federal democratic uh, pluralistic Iraq. Therefore, today we are able to say we are in a better position and the oil of Kurdistan will be sold, and nothing is illegal about it. Indeed, what Baghdad says is illegal, because we were asked to be full-time Iraqis for certain matters and not Iraqis for other matters, and we don't understand that equation. Uh, you have the United Nations behind you. When do you think the Kurdistan, Iraqi Kurdistan flag will fly with the other 193 nations there? Well, it will be the people of Kurdistan in the referendum to decide that, and the moment they decided I believe the Kurdish leadership will abide by that. Fala Mustafa Bakir from New York.